Peter Schiff. You know, our next guest is MIA right now, so we still got Chris DeRose, who's sitting with us, the author. I'm a glutton for punishment. Yeah, the author of Congressman Lincoln, The Making of America's Greatest President. And, you know, we're talking, just talking off off the air about about the other things that happened. You know, when, when we got the income tax during the the Civil War, which, you know, we had never had before, which you mentioned Lincoln was opposed to the income tax, uh, yet he thought it was necessary in the war to do it. Uh, they they had things that they totally you know didn't have due process when it came to uh, the government's ability to seize property. And the idea was that well, um, you can always sue to get it back if the government took it and, and and you really didn't know the money, you could sue to get it back. And because it was a war and they didn't have time for due process, but. Today's Internal Revenue Service seizure laws are based on the Civil War statutes. And the reason the IRS can levy your bank account and your wages without a hearing and without due process is because Lincoln did it during the Civil War. They took that precedent, and now we're living with it today. Well, unfortunately, we have bad leaders who sanction that sort of activity <laughs> in peacetime. Uh, yeah. This was a, These were extraordinary measures used to be equal to an extraordinary challenge that the federal government faced. But Lincoln would have been the first person to have been surprised by what's been continued, by what's been sort of done in his name, subsequently by the federal government. You know, we made a fake website for this book. It's LincolnForCongress.com. And it is uh, to be, you know, supposed to be Lincoln's campaign website when he ran for Congress. Yeah. And I use all of his own words. And one of the first things he invades against is the national debt and the income tax. You know, <laughs> principles that we would... I know, but uh, and it's unintended consequences. It shows the things that happen, you know, like Woodrow Wilson taking us into World War One. Had we not do it, it's it's very doubtful that there ever would have been a World War II. It's doubtful that there ever would have been an Adolf Hitler. Not that, you know, he could have possibly foresaw that at the time. But, you know, these are the unintended consequences. Governments usurp all sorts of power during wartime, which is one of the reasons you never want a war, because we always lose those wars. And then they don't surrender them. Like the paper money, if you look at all the legal tender cases uh, that the government relies on today to say that the Federal Reserve notes are constitutional, they all go back to the greenback, which came in, came into being during the Civil War. And, and the court said, well, it was necessary power to preserve the Union in time of war. But today, the courts don't even look at the distinction. And, and even those were those greenbacks were backed by gold. It's, they were redeemable. But they used those war, those cases about the, to what the government did during the Civil War to justify what the Federal Reserve is doing now. Yeah, although I don't think we can look back on the people who, you know, we can't blame the people who conducted the Civil War for sort of the abuse of <laughs> the president in the modern era. Oh, I know. I'm just time. saying, I'm just trying to look back at history. Would we have been better off had that not happened, had we not had the war, uh, imagine you know what might have happened to both the northern and southern economies had they not had to waste all that money, all those resources, all those lives on a war. I mean, it, the, the 19th, the 18th century is already a tremendous century. And in fact, if you look at the growth in America in 1880, 1890, it's unprecedented. But Imagine how much better it might have been had we not had to fight and then repair the damage from the uh, the Civil War. There's no doubt about it. Look, the Civil War came at an unprecedented cost in terms of treasure, in terms of human life. Uh, but from the government's perspective, you know, the president, President Lincoln, believed he had no choice. You know, like he says mm -hmm. in his, his second inaugural address, you know, one group of Americans would make war rather than let the Union survive. And one group of Americans would accept war rather than let the yeah. Union perish. Yeah, and then, you know, there's all whole idea about racism. And, of course, you know, you know, slavery is, again, I don't want anyone to think I'm defending the institution of slavery. I mean, I abhor it, you know. And, and the, the question was, you know, given the circumstances, what was the best thing to do at the time? But if you think about racism, how much racism was there after the war. I mean, you can argue that the Civil War created a lot of racism that might not have even existed. There was a lot of animosity. If people blamed blacks, you know, wrongly for that war, I think there was a lot of even northern racism. Yeah, you referenced um, the draft riots earlier. Yeah. Uh, in the draft riots, the number one targets of uh, were, were blacks, uh, black Americans living in New York. Yeah, and, and, and so, you know, and, and, and I think, look, we, we, we could have had uh, more advancements in, in civil rights. I think, you know, slavery would have died out and maybe black Americans would be much better off today. 
Yeah, I find uh, that very know. hard to believe. I think getting a, a several generation, you know, head start on experiencing freedom, you know, integrating society as people. I don't know that. I think people. the welfare state has entrapped them. Uh, I think that, you know, what we have done in the name of civil rights has basically created a nation of dependence. I think, you know, even if you look at the black families, black families were more intact under slavery than they are today where the mother and father stayed married with the children, families were together more under slavery. That's how bad the welfare state has destroyed black families. And, and I think all these laws that have been passed in the name of civil rights have really destroyed opportunity for blacks and have, made, and have created uh, you know, racism. So you know, it, there, there's, there have been a lot of backfires. I think if we had a small government, a limited government, that all Americans would have been freer, including uh, those that were formerly slaves. Yeah, I think if we didn't have the Civil Rights Act, if we didn't have the Voting Rights Act, if we didn't have USC 1983, um, I, I, I can't imagine that um, Americans of all colors would have been had the same opportunities that they would have otherwise. I just can't accept that argument. Yeah, I mean, I think they'd have more. I mean, I, I, as I said, I think that one of the biggest reasons that I mean, we might still have segregated lunch counters in the no, South. No, we wouldn't. You know, well, the segregation, segregation at the government level, of course, was wrong. You know, where you have the state. And of course, you know, so uh, yes, if uh, I live in Connecticut, if the state of Connecticut said we're going to mandate in all public places that there be segregation, of course, that's wrong. But I don't have any problem. I'm Jewish. If somebody wants to open up a restaurant and, and, and not allow Jews, I couldn't give a damn. In fact, I've said often, if there's an anti-Semite with a restaurant, I hope he hangs a sign that says no Jews allowed. Because so I don't accidentally eat yeah, there? Yeah, I don't want to accidentally eat there and give him any money. <laughs> but I don't think anybody would do that. But I think the problem is that there are a lot of small business owners that don't hire minorities because they can't risk getting sued. I mean, the government has passed so many laws to protect minorities that they protected them from getting a job because you can't afford to hire them because of all the ways you can get sued and fined. And, and, and so, and then you have other things like minimum wage laws and occupational licensing laws that have really worked to the detriment of minorities to keep them poor and to keep them on welfare so they keep voting for these liberal politicians that count on that vote. Yeah, I know I see these laws more as having leveled the playing field and opened up doors for people of color in the United States, you know, and I understand that um, these were extraordinary measures and that some of them were up without precedent, but I think without them, I think we'd still have uh, uh, two tiers of citizenship in the United States as we did for most of the country. Yeah, not really. I think if you look at groups that immigrated into America, that came here with nothing, that came here well after the slaves were freed, and you look at how they've done, they've done a lot better. Uh, you know, then, you know, so I, I think well, it's easier I, for us to assimilate, too. I mean, in my family, you know, I'm second generation American, third generation American from Italy. Mm -hmm. It's easier for us to assimilate once you come to America. You know, we started mm -hmm. learning, you know, English language. Uh, it was a lot easier for us to assimilate. We don't have to deal with the racial discrimination that's there, no matter how many generations your family's in the United States, say, in the instance of someone. Who's well, there was black. plenty of discrimination against uh, Irish who came in or, you know, Italians who came in. I mean, there's always some degree of discrimination among different religions or ethnic groups I mean it, it was going on uh, but you know ultimately people were able to overcome that and I think one of the problems uh, that blacks had was the leadership within you know that was catering to to them in a way that just created dependency as opposed to a culture of worth ethic and achieving on your own it was you know looking for you know blaming somebody for your lack of success and and all of these programs but you know would we have had those programs had had we not had had we not had that civil war, you know, and and had slavery died out on its own? Which, of course, I mean, it it, it would have, right? There's, there's 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 no way that the institution it's hard to see could how have it survived, would have. right? It's hard to see how it would have. I mean, at the time of the Civil War, you know, like we talked about off air, um, the value of all the slaves in the plantation system in the South was greater than that of all the factories and mills and all the wealth of the North. So at the time, it was still incredibly profitable. I mean, so much so that the election of President Abraham Lincoln, someone who was who did not run on a, a platform of abolishing slavery, someone who simply opposed expanding slavery, that was enough to actually trigger uh, a revolution in the South, yeah. a secession movement. But the thing is, had the slaves been freed, right, and the plantations hired them back, because of course the slaves would have needed jobs. If they were freed and their masters were no longer feeding them, clothing them, taking care of their medicine, they were gonna need jobs. The most likely jobs were to work at the very plantations that formerly enslaved them. And the question is, would those plantations have had more income, had been more profitable and valuable employing people who worked free 
and heart than, than employing a bunch of slaves. And I think that they ultimately would have had greater value uh, from a, a, a voluntary uh, arrangement uh, employing, you know, employing people than enslaving them. Because I don't think slavery is a viable economic formula. I don't think it can p compete with free people freely doing labor in exchange for a paycheck. Yeah, unfortunately, the plantation owners disagreed. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that's what they thought. But that, that was because they didn't know any better. So I mean, if you've see. had slaves, if you've been running a plantation for generations, and these plantations were passed on for families for hundreds of years, and that's your way of life. That's all you know. How do you know what it would be like if it was any if it was different? But that's why it's hard for yeah. me to see clear to a scenario where the South voluntarily mm -hmm. uh, emancipates. No, all right. Look, they obviously weren't going to do it because they didn't do it, and they fought a war over it. Yeah. The question is, are we better off today because we we fought that war? Given all the things that have happened, I mean, you can say, well, we could we didn't anticipate all these things that happened based on the precedents. Based on, I mean, maybe if Lincoln knew at the beginning how long it would be drawn out, how many people would die, maybe he wouldn't have wanted it if he knew, if he could see, you know, because you get into something and maybe, maybe he thought it would be over quickly and the dead would not be nearly as numerous as it was. Yeah, you know, and you, you listed a lot of things that, you know, you, you said were, you know, tyrannical or examples of government overreach, and in many instances, I agree with you on those. The problem is we've never had bigger government in this country than the government that sanctioned slavery, that sanctioned the ability of someone else to own you and to be able to oh, yeah, that, everything in well, your Oh, yeah, no, no argument with there. That was yeah. wrong from inception. Yeah, that's the most tyrann tyrannical thing government and ever I th I think I think it would have been it would have been fine if, you know, we, the, the southern states had not come on board. But I think we need, you know, that would have been fine with me from the beginning, you know, in the Constitution, if we had, if the Union had not included those states because they, they wanted to preserve slavery. And I think it would have died out eventually anyway, and they might have joined the Union later on as free states, and I think it would be a stronger Union because we'd have a smaller, weaker federal government. Yeah. Anyway, hey, thanks for going on. we got another break. Uh, we'll be back 855